Well, we're excited to get back out here tomorrow uh, here at home uh, against Seton Hall. Obviously, this would be round two versus Seton Hall. Lost a close one uh, back at their place, you know, a few weeks back. Um, you know, Kevin Wilders does a tr tremendous job. Uh, you know, they're a team that's going to switch defenses constantly throughout the game. Go a little 2-3 matchup, a little 2-2-1 two, two, press, and they'll go man-to-man. -man. They obviously have a very, very unique defender in Ike Obagu, who's one of the uh, premier shot blockers in the entire country. They try to keep him around the rim as much as possible uh, to block shots. That's why their two-point field goal percentage defense is so good. Um, then on the offensive end, you know, Kadari Richmond's really stepped up for them. You know, with the injury to Bryce Aiken, who's, uh, who's a tremendous guard, you know, Kadari's really filled in nicely. You know, and he's a different player than Bryce. Um, he's 6'6". Six, six. He's the biggest point guard in our league. Uh, he's very physical. They post him up a lot. Um, so he'll play on the perimeter, he'll play in the post. And then they have Jared Roden as well on the wing, who's an all-conference level player. Um, scores it at all three levels. Um, he's a really tough tough cover as well. So, you know, I thought in game one where they really got us was on the glass early. Um, you know, they're the number two offensive rebounding team in our league. We're the number one defensive rebounding team in our league. We have to do a much, much, much better job of being physical on those blockouts because of their size. They're a lot bigger than we are uh, at every position. So we got to be more physical and hold those blockouts longer. And then number two, we turned the ball over too much in the first half. I think we had 10 turnovers in the first half. And we had three in the second. We did a much better job in the second half taking care of the ball. But we didn't get enough shots up on the rim in that first half. And we always talk about shot volume here with our guys. And what that means, the team that usually gets the most shots up at the rim is going to win more, more times than not. And that's so you got to take care of the ball. you got to win the war on the glass. I think they had 13 or 14 more shot attempts than us uh, in game one. Travis, coming off of a, a really intense emotional game, a physically draining game, that you came out on the wrong side of. How do you how do you leave that behind you and put it behind you and, and sort of, you know, bury it and move on? Yeah, you just you have to you have to move on, right? You know, um, the sun's going to rise the next day. You, you prepare the same way you're going to prepare for every other game. You got to let go of it. That's what I told our guys. Listen, it is what it is. I thought we left it all out there. I thought we competed. Uh, Providence got a tremendous team and uh, they beat us. Listen, they outplayed us, so you move right on to the next game, and that's what uh, winners do. Any positive movement on the Nate Johnson front? Is is he practicing or progressing in a direction that might make him available? Yeah, um, I don't know yet if he's going to be available or not, Adam. Um, he did work out today, though, this morning, uh, which was a good sign. Um, I don't know if he'll practice. I'm hopeful that he, we can get him out there a little bit and practice today. Uh, but it's kind of, you know, it's day-to-day. -day. I mean, he, he could definitely, if he feels good about it um, from a mental standpoint, and he knows his body better than anybody because uh, he feels it. As long as he feels good about it, then he'll play on Saturday. And if not, then, you know, again, it's going to be next man up mentality. Uh, to follow up on that, he's one of the best three-point shooting players in the country. How, how much are you missing a guy like Nate Johnson during this stretch? Yeah, I mean, I mean we obviously miss him. He's a great player. Jeremy, he's a, uh, he's a terrific shooter, uh, scores the ball for us, and he's a really good defender. I think that's probably what gets lost in translation. A lot of times people talk about his shooting, but he's a, he's a really good defender as well. But, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, you miss it, but, listen, you know, next guy up, you know, dewan has been playing really well. AK's been, been kind of picking up some scoring as well. So we've had other guys step up, you know, during this stretch. This time of the year heading into March, the most important time of the year arguably, when your team just isn't – getting the breaks when it's been so close and you're going through this stretch, losing, I think, five of six now. What's your message to them, Travis, right now to kind of stay locked in through what's been a, a pretty rough stretch? You know, I showed our guys, I usually don't do this, but I felt like there was so much negativity going around. It's like, you know, show them where we are, you know, wh wh where we are and where we got to go moving forward. Um, you know, we take it one game at a time, obviously, but we did it the night before Providence kind of showed them blind resumes of us compared to some other teams. And you'd be shocked. It's like, whoa, you, you wouldn't know. I don't think our guys had any idea, right? They just hear a lot of the negativity that's out there. And, and uh, we still have work to do, obviously. There's games left to be played. But um, our guys have done a good job to this point in the year. They've put us in a good position to play meaningful games here into, going into March, late February right now. Every day seems like the same day right now for me. But, but February, March, having meaningful games. And uh, 
we got some great opportunities. The good thing about our league, listen, you lose a tough one like, you, like we lost at Providence. We got Seton all here on, uh, on Saturday two days later, who's a great opponent, which would be considered a terrific win, right? So it's a great opportunity for our team. Just got to stay positive, stay upbeat, stick together, and again, just keep moving forward. And then one final one, and I'll pass it back to Adam here. Um, to your point about showing them the resumes, kind of the blind resumes, does some of that maybe put their minds at ease? I mean, as a coaching staff, are you saying, guys, forget, forget looking up, don't Google bracketology, don't look it up. Like us as a coaching staff, we've got it. This is how we look. This is where we are. Does that put their mind at ease, do you think? Yeah, I want our guys to play loose. I think that's important. I don't want our guys to play tight. But I do want to have urgency, right? There's a, it's kind of that fine line. And, uh, but I always want to give our guys transparency of where we are. Right, and uh, I want them to know exactly where we are and where we what we need to do to reach our goals. So, um, I think again, you, ha you have to be comfortable where we are because it is what it is. Not going to change it other any other way. So, we got to take care of business next game, which is obviously here against Seton Hall. Travis, you you mentioned negativity, and I think a lot of that, you know, thanks to social media, gets unfairly thrown at players, and it's one thing to kind of help them through it and help them deal with that. Um, how do you deal with, with negativity? You've said before that you don't really read anything or get it. Do you just keep Twitter closed during the season, or how do you deal with it? Yeah, I, I, it doesn't really bother me. You know, listen, we, we've again, I've been a part of a lot of teams that have, that have been through some struggles, and all of a sudden we finish strong. You can't blink. If I'm not going to seek out their opinion you know, or advice, then why would I listen to their opinion? Right. Um, so, listen, we, we, uh, we're doing the right things. We're preparing the right way. I believe in our team wholeheartedly. Um, and uh, I think, again, we're going we're gonna to continue to get better here and improve down the stretch here and, uh, and be ready for a strong run, a strong finish here at the end of the year. One thing that, that really, I think, stood out in game one, and, and I think it speaks more to the fact that, that Jared Roden's a really good player. Um, you know, I think he had 25 points. And a lot of them, if I remember right, were – not easy shots you know I, I don't necessarily think that you guys did a poor job defending him but where does where do the changes need to come to make sure that that he doesn't get as comfortable or, or have as easy as of a time scoring as he did in that first one yeah he, he's a uh adam you said it, he, he's a really tough shot maker right um he has an ability to get his own shot he's six eight right he's a wing but he can get his own shot in that mid-range which he is potent from there and he shoots the ball well from three and he can post you and he can finish at the rim so he does it in a lot of different ways so he's got to see a lot of bodies you know like I always said listen can't make it a game of one-on-one -on -one against Jared you got to make it a game of one-on-two one-on-three constantly um, and listen he's going to make some he's a great scorer he's a great player he's an all-conference player for a reason we just got to make him earn every single one of his points so they all have to be contested he can't get any easy looks I thought against a game one against our zone specific early on, he got a wide open three, right, on the, in the right seam. And uh, that got him going. You know, like you can't give a guy like that an open look early just to see one go in. Everything's got to be hand to ball on every one of his shots. Have they uh, visibly changed their style with – Aiken's been out for a while. They've been playing pretty well. Are they yeah. uh, different at all in the way they play? They're huge. I mean, you think about it. Kadari is six six. He plays the one. There's two guards six six. They're small forward six eight. They're four man, depending upon who they start. Six nine, six ten, and their center seven one, seven two, right? Like, and then they come off with six nine, come off with six eleven. I mean, it's just like their size. They're the biggest team in our league. I think they're one of the biggest teams, obviously, in the country. Um, they just try to punk you, Andy. They try to take your lunch money. Um, you know, like on the glass with their pressure, with how they try to get fouled, they try to post you. They're not going to post their five, man. Ike, you know, he, he's an obviously a great prolific shot blocker, but um, he's a little bit more limited on the offensive end with his skill set. So they post Kadari at the one. They're going to post Roden at the, on the wing. They're going to post Kale on the wing. And those dudes are just so big, man. And they just try to play bully ball. And they're good at it. <laughs> really good.
I think they're uh, they're f like five and two in their last seven, something like that. They've only given up 62 points a game in the five victories. I mean, that, that's really stingy. Yeah, I, like I said, I mean, their size I think is elite, and, and they just they pack it in. They don't really play. They don't get spread out defensively. You know, they keep Ike always kind of around the rim, whether they're in their matchup zone or. Uh, and man as well, they'll try to keep him around the rim to just be that. He alter, he blocks a lot of shots, but he alters a ton. Um, and then you got all those other guys just with size and length and physicality and make it really, 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 really hard to score on. Uh, it seems like their bench is really producing the last uh, you know, number of games. Uh, uh, I mean, the two big guys, but the other guy, Harris, Jameer. seems to be doing well. Yeah, Jameer um, – Transferred in there. He's a grad transfer, terrific shooter. Um, but he's more than a shooter, man. He, he's really stepped his play up with the absence of Bryce Aiken. You look at his productivity, he gives them the microwave. When he goes in, they're running things for him to get shots. He can score it at all three levels. He's aggressive, he's fearless, he's confident. And then, like you said, Tyrese Samuel up front. Yetna is really a starter if you look at his minutes. I mean, he, you look at his rebounding numbers per minute, per 40, it's as good as anybody in the country. Um, he's 6'9", 6'10". I mean, again, like I said, they are just big and physical. And they got good guards. They got guards, creative guards, like Jameer Harris and Kadari who, and Jared Roden who can go get their own. Uh, Cesar really played well. Uh, when Zach fouled out, I mean, he stepped up and, and filled the hole. Do you, you see a, a similar role for him in, in this game against such a big team? I do. Uh, I think Cesar, you know, like I thought against even against Providence, you know, obviously played three overtimes, but I thought he did some nice things in the Providence game. Um, he's coming on. He really is. I think he's starting to get that confidence, you know, that, that he needs. Um, he saw a shot go in. I, I swear he could shoot the ball. I know he didn't. He airballed one against Seton Hall, and uh, he's a way better. But, again, you saw it against uh, Providence. He had a little face-up jump, jumper on uh, in the first half. Um, he's got a great skill set, but he plays hard. You feel Cesar. Like, I feel his presence. I feel his physicality, and we're going to need that physicality in this game, especially because it's hard to play small. Against Seton Hall, you got to play big. Well, Cesar matched up against uh, uh, Watson. I thought pretty darn effectively. Put put his body into him and uh, had a steal against him. I think he, he did. You know, he, he's not scared. You know, he's fearless. He's physical. Uh, he he's one of those guys that thrives on contact. You know, doesn't shy away from it. He goes right to it. Um, like I, sometimes it leads to fouls for him, Andy. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, we can always reel that thing back, but he uh, he's a physical young man, and I, I think he's really coming on. I think he has a chance to change our team here, especially down the stretch. Thanks. Thanks.